الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الكريم وعلى آله وصحابه ومن استنى بالسنة إلى يوم الدين. All praise due to Allah and may Allah's peace and blessings be on the last Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم and on all those who follow the path of righteousness until the last day. Dear viewers, we'd like to welcome you to another in our series in the names of Allah. And in this segment, we'll be looking at the name As-Salam. As-Salam, which is the eighth of the names that we are covering in this series. This name can only be found in one place in the Qur'an. It is in Surah Al-Hashr, verse 23, Al-Malik Al-Quddus salam the Sovereign, the Holy, the Bestower of Peace. Linguistically speaking, it is derived from salam or salama. So the meaning is either free from defects, safe and well-being. When a person gives the greeting salam alaikum, it means one is informing a fellow believer that they are free and safe from any hostility from our side. But with respect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this name means on one hand that Allah is free from any defects and deficiencies like Al-Quddus that we took earlier, and also that He will greet the believers in paradise, as He said in Surah Yasin, Salamun qawlam mir Rabbir Rahim, Peace a greeting from the Most Merciful Lord. The effects of this belief, or belief in this particular name, As-Salam, for the believer, it should ensure him or her that they will not be denied the fruit of their sacrifices. Whatever sacrifices they have made, whatever uh, efforts they have striven for, they will not be denied its fruits. As the Prophet ﷺ informed, that a believer has to live in a self-imposed prison in this life. While the disbeliever is free to roam around and to do whatever he or she pleases. He said, Ad-dunya sijnul mu'min wa jannatul kafir. This world is a prison for the believer and paradise for the disbeliever. So it means that the believer has to make sacrifices. He imposes on himself this uh, denial, where he denies himself certain things. The belief in the name as salam ensures him that that sacrifice will not be in vain. It is something which Allah has commanded. Allah being free from defects, his promise will be fulfilled. And reality, though people tend to look at Islam, those practicing Islam, that it's all a matter of don't do this and don't do that and don't do the other. But this is not really the case. Reality is that the majority of things we are permitted to do. There's only a minority, a small amount, a small amount of things which we can't do. Like Adam in paradise, the whole garden was his except for one tree. All that is in life before us is the same way. The forbidden things are few. Only Satan has beautified these forbidden things and made us feel that our lives are incomplete unless we do these particular forbidden things. Otherwise, really, there's not really that much of a sacrifice. Because there's so much that we can do. But due to the pressures of the society around us, you know, our desires, etc., it is a struggle. We do feel it and live it as a struggle. So, is it worthwhile? When this life, for the disbeliever, is a paradise, we see them enjoying themselves in all the different ways. Our belief in as-salam 
that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is free from any defects in what He has promised us. It is true. It's the truth, 100%. It gives us confidence to stick on the right path, stay with the way of Islam, and to give up those other things, not get involved in them, knowing that there, there is really no value in them. Those things which have been forbidden are harmful. And that's why Allah forbade them. Not just to make life difficult for us, but to protect us from harm. Whether we're able to see the harm, as in the case of alcohol and gambling, or whether we can not see the harm, as in the case of pork and other forbidden things. Secondly, belief that peace, safety and well-being comes only ultimately from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala encourages the believer to turn to Allah for peace of mind and contentment. His belief or her belief that peace, well-being, safety ultimately comes from Allah should lead him to remember Allah often because Allah told us, Allah bi dhikrillahi tatma'in al It is only with the remembrance of Allah that hearts find rest. So that instruction tells us where we need to look for finding rest for our hearts. People in this world run after that state of rest everywhere but where they should be looking. So they spend their lives trying to gather as much materials around themselves and to try and find, you know, uh, pleasure or pl- find uh, contentment or happiness in the material world. But reality is that those people who have the most of this material world live wretched lives. Were material truly the source of contentment and peace of mind and heart, then those who had the most wealth would be the most contented and peaceful. But reality is exactly the opposite. So we know ultimately that peace and contentment only comes from Allah. So we seek it through following His commandments, through remembering Him, because following His commandments requires us to remember Him, to live a life which reflects a consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. On a human level, If we look at this attribute of Allah being, again, we said, as salam the source of peace and security. As He provides that peace and security for us, as believers, we should also seek to provide peace and security for our brothers and sisters in Islam, for the world. We should not be a source of insecurity and war. Reality is that Prophet Sallallahu said, Al-Muslim man salima al-Muslimuna min lisanihi wa yadi. The true Muslim is one from whose tongue and hands Muslims are safe. That's the true Muslim. One from whose tongue is not speaking ill, cursing, using, uh, backbiting, spreading rumors. People are safe from that. And also from his hands. He's not stealing their property. He's not striking them. He's not creating harm. So he should also be a source of salam. As Allah SWT is the ultimate source that has provided it for him in that society or her in that society. They should also reflect that to the rest of the society. And Prophet Muhammad had also said, Shall I tell you who the true believer is? One from whom people feel secure regarding their wealth and their persons. The true believer is one from whom people feel secure regarding their wealth and their persons. So, this is part of the effects that the name As-Salam should have on us. Make us a source of security for the society. People feel secure when they're around us. And that's how the Muslim society should be. Now in terms of praying using this name, Prophet Muhammad after prayers, after saying Astaghfirullah three times, I ask forgiveness from Allah, 
He used to say, Allahumma anta salam wa minka salam. Tabarak ya dhal jalali wal ikram. O oh Allah, you are peace and peace comes from you. May you be blessed, O oh owner of glory and peace. So he commonly used to say this after the prayers. Also, he instructed us to spread peace in the society because the bond of brotherhood, sisterhood in the society is critical for that society to be a healthy society where people feel a bonding between themselves and the other members of the society. So Prophet Muhammad had said, you will not enter paradise until you believe and you will not believe until you love each other. Shall I not guide you to something which if you did it, you will love each other? Spread the peace, greetings of peace among yourselves. Spread the greetings of peace among yourselves. This was the recommendation of the Prophet Wasallam, that we constantly greet each other with peace. As-salamu alaykum. Also, the greetings of peace help to bond people in a brotherhood. So we talked about, very important for having that sense and that feeling of brotherhood. And one might think, okay, yes, we give salams, but who is responsible? The tendency is for people who are in a position of authority or whatever, everybody else has to give salams to him or her. They don't bother to be give, give salams. But Prophet Muhammad Sallam, to get away from that, gave us even the order by which peace greetings should be given. Each and every person has uh, another person who either he will begin to give the greetings to or they will be give the greetings to him. Depending on what position they're in, the Prophet ﷺ advised who has the first responsibility. We're going to be looking at that responsibility after the break, inshallah. So we leave you now and hope to see you again. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam wa rasulillah. I'd like to welcome you, dear viewers, back to our program in the names of Allah. And in this segment of the program, we were looking at the name, the eighth name, As-Salam. And we said that it meant the bestower of peace, the source of peace. And we spoke about its relevance to the believer in general. We said at first that the knowledge that Allah, first and foremost, is free of defects like the name Al-Quddus because we said that part of the meanings of the name As-Salam is also from As-Salama which means really well-being, safe from any kind of harm. So relative to Allah it meant that he was without any defects. We said that recognizing Allah through this divine name as being free and without any kind of defects, free of any kind of defects, it meant then that the promises that he gave us in this life uh, of success for living a life like a prisoner were true. We should have no doubt about it. We sacrifice, we give up the things we might desire for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he will reward us for it. We also said that it meant, uh, one of the meanings of the names, it meant uh, safety and peace. And uh, that state of peace, we should only seek it with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As He told us, it's only with the remembrance of Allah that hearts find rest. And this, in fact, is the real goal that each and every human being is striving for. Whether he knows it or whether she doesn't know it, that's really what they're looking for. In all of the things that people do, they want to find some sense of contentment. But we're looking in the wrong place. Some people try to find it in music. So they surround themselves in music. 
and they find some sense of uh, of uh, contentment. But when the music stops, because you can't live in music all the time, then it's gone. So it comes for a while and it's gone. Some people find it in drugs. You take certain drugs, you feel pleasant, you feel happy, whatever. But then the drug goes after a while, then you feel down. Something artificial. It's not real. It will not keep you in that state of contentment. And people, in order to try to keep in that state of contentment, end up overdosing and killing themselves. So, the real peace and contentment that people strive for in this life, it can only be found in remembrance of Allah. Being conscious of Allah and living lives in accordance with what Allah has told us to do. On the third level, we said, it meant that we would reflect this quality of peace and security in the society. That we would not be a cause of insecurity. We would try to be a source of security. When non-Muslims come into the Muslim society, they should feel a sense of security. And from my personal experience, I know in countries that I've lived where people practice Islam at a, a higher and higher level, we find the non-Muslims, when they're asked, you know, what do you, how do you feel about living here? They say, we feel secure, we feel safe. Safety that we didn't feel back home in our countries. And that's, that's a good sign. That's a good sign. That is one of the consequences of the divine name, as salam being implemented in the society. That people do have that sense of concern to ensure that those around them are safe from them. As the Prophet ﷺ had said, Al-Muslim man salim al-Muslimuna min lisanihi wa yadi. The true Muslim is one from whom Muslims are safe from his tongue and his hands. Then we said that the Prophet ﷺ used to pray using this name. Uh, after the prayers, he used to make a supplication, Allahumma anta salam wa minka salam tabarak tayyad al-jalal wa ikram O Allah, you are peace, and peace comes from you. May you be blessed, O owner of glory and peace. Then we went on to say that the Prophet ﷺ told us to spread peace amongst us. To spread it, to make it a common uh, occurrence. We always give people salams whenever we go. Actually, the companions of the Prophet, may God's peace and blessing be upon him, it was noted that if they were walking and a tree came between them. They had to go on either side as they were walking. When they came back together, they used to give salams to each other again. So much. Actually, non-Muslims living amongst Muslims, to some degree, they find it a little annoying. You know, people coming into the office and giving greetings all the time. I mean, in other societies, you give greetings in the morning, that's it. One time, finished. No matter how many times you go out, you come in, whatever, that's it. So this thing of Muslims coming in all the time and greeting and... Yeah, we have to greet again. And greeting, they find it annoying to some degree. Not really understanding that this greeting is in fact, you know, a, a, a spreading a good feeling. Because of course the greeting should be with a smile. As the Prophet ﷺ had said, that smiling at your brother is sadaqah, it's charity. So it shouldn't be, salam alaikum, you know, you're, you've got a frown, etc. It should be a pleasant, salam alaikum. People will feel good. They feel the the peace that you are that's emanating from you. So it's a good thing, and uh, we advise those non-Muslims living among, among Muslims to practice it also, practice it sincerely, and they will share in that feeling. But in general, for the Muslim society, it's a means of spreading love between the members of the society, and the Prophet ﷺ, in order to prevent people from turning it into a ritual which is uh, prescribed when you're dealing with the poor, the powerful and the rich. So you, say, you have to give them greetings. He specified saying that the young should greet the elders with peace. The passerby should greet the one sitting. And the smaller group should greet the larger group. 
the one riding should greet the one walking. So he gave levels at which the peace, greetings of peace should be given. So nobody has uh, an excuse to try to not give the greetings because they feel somebody is inferior to them. Because either uh, we're going to be in a group or we're, as an individual, we're either sitting or we're walking, we're passing by, then we are this younger than somebody else. Somebody comes in the room. They're older than us. So we give the greetings to them. And that's the right. And it is, Prophet ﷺ made it the right of a Muslim and another Muslim that when he greets, it is obligatory on the other Muslim to return the greeting. So the idea that somebody gives you salams and you feel you're too high, too powerful, too important to give them back salams, this is something despicable. Something displeasing to God. So, giving salams is not obligatory. It's recommended, as Prophet ﷺ recommended it. If we want to develop love amongst each other, then, as the Prophet ﷺ said, we should do it. And if we want to enter paradise, then we have to believe. But without loving each other, we cannot really achieve belief, true belief. The belief that will take us to paradise. Because the Prophet ﷺ had said, uh, one does not believe until he loves for his brother what he loves for himself. So, to attain paradise, as the Prophet ﷺ had said, only believers are entering paradise. So, to attain that state, one has to love his brother, his sister, in Islam. And the thing which will help to do it is to greet each other. So, the Prophet ﷺ recommended it. Furthermore, he also recommended that it is superior to greet one who one knows and one who one doesn't know. The easy thing is to greet the person who you know. But most people tend to greet those who they know and those they don't know, they don't give greetings to. But this is not the way. Prophet ﷺ said, in praising one who gives salams, he, he said that it's the one who gives the greetings to those who he knows and those who he doesn't know. That's the true spirit is there of spreading the greetings of peace in the society where one does not neglect giving it to those who he or she doesn't know. It should also be noted that this greeting of peace being one of the symbols of Islam exists actually even in the Jewish and Christian texts, indicating that it was in practice from the earliest of times. When Allah revealed the true religion, Islam, to Adam and Eve, it was there from the beginning. So we can find, for example, in Christian texts, that Jesus is reported to have greeted his followers, saying, Peace be upon you. Right? This is found in the Gospel of John. Right? How true the Gospel of John is, Allah knows best. But in chapter 20, verse 19, it's mentioned there that Jesus gave the greetings of peace to his followers. It states, Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I send you. So this was their greeting. Peace be upon you. Also, in the Old Testament, we can find in 1 Samuel 25, verse 6, Prophet David instructs his emissaries, who he sent out to a place called Nabal, Thus you shall salute him. Peace be to you. And peace be to your house. And peace be to all that you have. Peace be to you. So, it was used in the time of David and no doubt in the times before. So, we are encouraged to give salams and sh spread it amongst us to those who we know, those who we don't know. The Prophet ﷺ gave us an order. Young people should give it to older people. We are also encouraged to give the salams 
uh, not only to our, those close to us, but those who are not related to us at all. If uh, a, we receive that greeting even from a non-Muslim, we should return the greeting. Right? But of course, uh, there is a consideration in terms of returning the greeting. The way to return the greeting is Wa alaykum. And on you also. With that, dear viewers, we'd like to thank you for being with us in this segment of our program, In the Names of Allah, in which we have looked at the name as Salam, the eighth in the list of names that we'll be covering. And in the coming segment, we'll be moving on to the name Al Mu'min. We hope that you'll be with us. Salam alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. When you are weak and the road seems long, remember, just remember, six.